Ladies and gentlemen, by the grace of God, I want to preach in your hearing a simple message titled, Jesus Makes a Move. The devil tempted me to say, Jesus bust the move. I said, no, devil. I got too many Pharisees who would come down hard on me and some good-hearted saints who stand with me as I preach the word of God. They, they won't understand that language. So I said, no, devil. But I was going to say, Jesus bust the move. You know the devil told me to do that. I said, no, I'm not going to do that, devil. I'm not going to do it. So I titled it, Jesus Makes a Move, Brings the Light, and Fulfills Prophecy. Part 1, the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, Day 94, believe it or not, of a 100-day campaign mirror, mirroring uh, President Trump's 100 days, first 100 days, which he was very excited about at the beginning. Now he calls the first 100 days of a presidency ridiculous, but uh, that's okay. What we have done here by the grace of God is not ridiculous. Preaching the word of God daily for souls to be saved, lives to be changed. And we thank God souls have been saved and lives have been changed. Day 94 of this campaign, day 461 overall since January 1, 2016, by the grace of God. Please stand with me for the reading of God's holy word. Matthew chapter 4, verse 12 through 17. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee and leaving Nazareth he came and dwelt in Capernaum Capernaum became his um, headquarters so to speak it was a bigger city on the coast uh, and people were coming and going and Jesus was all about getting the gospel out to the people. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast in the borders of Zebulun and Nephthalim. That means that this is where the tribes of Zebulun and Nephthalim settled when they came out of Egypt. Verse 14, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Nephthalim, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. For we see here from Jump Street, Jesus was concerned not only about the Jews, but us the Gentiles. Here's the prophecy. The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is 
sprung up. Somebody say amen. From that time, Jesus began to preach. He didn't get a TV show. He preached. He, is everything all right over there? Is everything okay over there? Okay, focus on that. Uh, he didn't uh, give a motivational talk. He preached. He didn't go out and do singings. He preached. He didn't sell books. He preached. And that's what, if you're called to preach, you ought to be doing. And you don't need a church to preach. Amen, somebody. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for having your holy word recorded for us today. Where would we be without your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, and without your Holy Word. And Lord, I marvel at what you have done. I marvel at your system of grace, even almost at 40 years of being saved by your grace. Uh, I am amazed, and I am grateful and thankful for what you have done for us. And thank you for your mercy and your grace. For Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us as Christians of our sins in this place, our failures and our faults, and then give us the grace to move on to higher heights and deeper depths, leaving foolishness behind. Cleanse us from all sin and all unrighteousness, and fit us for your use, and grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to not only preach your holy word, but to hear it and to get it out to others all around the world. 100 languages, multiple sites and avenues, pipes and wires and cables. Lord, I don't know how uh, you did it, but you've done it. And thank you for giving us a heart and mind to use it to spread the gospel around the world. And we pray that you'll save that soul that is nearest hell. Lord, if just one person got saved today, it would be worth it all. And we pray that many would get saved and that all Christians would be revived and blessed and encouraged. Demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit. Grant us fresh unction and anointing and the power of your Holy Spirit and to preach your Holy Word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And for his sake, amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, A.W. Tozer said, the cross is the lightning rod of grace that short circuits God's wrath to Christ so that only the light of his love remains for believers in Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Some of you young people have never heard of A.W. Tozer. If you will, I cut my teeth on people like A.W. Tozer some 35 years ago. And I appreciate him more now than I did back then because he was deeper uh, than the average bear. But now I understand a whole lot better now. So we thank God for his ministry as him being dead yet speaketh. Beloved, back to the word of God as it ought to be. After relating Jesus' triumph over Satan's temptations, uh, the tax collector Matthew begins to 
describe the early movement of Jesus' ministry. He begins to break it down. We know from the book of John that immediately after Jesus' wilderness experience, he returned to the region of the Jordan River in Judea where he preached the message of repentance and the kingdom of God. But because Matthew organizes his gospel uh, topically rather than chrono chronologically, he does not include that time here. Rather, he picks up right after Jesus had heard that John the Baptist was cast into prison. Now remember, John the Baptist said, uh, he must increase and I must decrease. Amen, somebody. And uh, let's all be reminded here, it is not about you. It is not about me. We all must adopt the spirit of John the Baptist. Jesus must increase and we must decrease. Can somebody say amen? So even though this is a bad thing for John, it is a good thing for the cause. Uh, John the Baptist did his job. Now it is time for Jesus the Messiah, Jesus Christ, to shine. Notice that Jesus did not go by the prison and, and uh, zap the doors open for John to go free. Uh, but he did say John is one of the greatest men to ever live. It was at this time that Jesus departed from Judea and went into Galilee. Everything that Jesus did was directed by his heavenly father and this move to Galilee was no different. Craig S. Keener describes it as a part of Jesus's mission strategy which would bring about greater exposure for his message. Once in Galilee Jesus didn't return to his hometown of Nazareth it was a small town and as we have seen the people there were less receptive to his preaching and his teaching for he made it clear that a prophet is not without honor save in his own home town if you will Jesus went to Capernaum a city with a greater population and uh, greater importance at that time to the regional trade and economy of the then known world. From there, the news that the kingdom of heaven had come would spread faster. Later rabbinical writings referred to Capernaum as a hotbed of schismatics. Presumably a derogatory reference to followers of Christ and of the people in general. Although Matthew focuses on presenting Jesus as the king of the Jews, he also recognizes that Jesus ultimately came with a message for all people. Quoting the prophet Isaiah, Matthew says that Jesus went into Galilee of the Gentiles. Much of Jesus' ministry occurred in this region where the people were not as, if you will, ethnically pure as the Jews of Judea. For Greeks and other foreigners had moved into Galilee and some intermarriage had taken place. The Jews of Judea viewed the Galileans with disdain 
and later used their prejudice to try to undermine Jesus' ministry. By quoting Isaiah, Matthew is saying to the Jews, Yes, Jesus came for you and for me, but he came for the Gentiles too. Jesus' movement to Galilee further fulfilled Isaiah's powerful prophecy, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up, for the light of the world has come. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. The Jews of that time likely thought of their darkness as only political, no doubt. The glory days of Israel were gone. David and Solomon were gone. And they were under the control of a pagan government that only tolerated their way of worship. But Jesus was more concerned about the spiritual darkness in which the people sat. Interestingly, the original prophecy from Isaiah says that the people were walking in darkness. And that's a tragedy. But Matthew says they were sitting in darkness. The people were not even looking for the light. By the time Matthew got a hold of it, perhaps they didn't even know they were in darkness. They just went ahead and they were walking in darkness at one time in the prophecy. Now they're sitting in darkness. My God, my God. And we have people today not only walking in darkness, some have just sat down in darkness. Just have given up. No hope. I read yesterday a man said, when you lose hope, there's really nothing else to live for. My God, my God. But Jesus brought the light to them so that they could be saved from a hopeless existence. Have you seen the great light, dear friend? Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? He came not only for the Jews, his brethren, according to the flesh, but he came for you and he came for me. I like what Bernard Barton said. He said, walk in the light and thou shalt know that fellowship of love, this love, his spirit alone can bestow. From where he reigns above. Walk in the light. And thou shalt find. Thy heart made truly. His. Who dwells in cloudless light. Enshrined in whom. No darkness is. Walk in the light. And sin. Abhorred shall never defile again. The blood of Jesus Christ. The Lord shall cleanse from every sin. Just as Jesus brought light to the Gentiles, dear friend, yea, to the Jews, to everybody, black, white, red, and yellow, Jesus moved his headquarters to Capernaum, an international city, to reach everybody to shine as prophesied his glorious light. He has brought the light to you. You need only open your eyes to see it, whether you're walking or sitting, and receive what the light reveals. So dear friend, if you are ready to place your faith and trust in the light of the world, his name is Jesus Christ. Allow me to show you how. First, dear friend, accept the fact that you are a sinner 
and that you have broken God's laws, and so have I. We're all guilty. It's the old, old story. Jesus and his love. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In other words, we all have failed God and his righteousness. You know you've done it. Let's not argue about it. Let's not even discuss it. You know you're guilty and I'm guilty. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty. There is a punishment for sin. That punishment, the Bible talks about in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. We die physically because of our sin. Right now as I speak, no matter how many bicycles you ride, no matter how many marathons you run, no matter, no matter how many weights you lift, no matter how much kale you eat, you will die physically. We all will because of one thing, sin. And we will die and take all of our pride and all of our evil right into the grave. And if we don't trust Christ as Savior, we will go to hell. In fact, Jesus Christ preached more on hell than anybody in the Bible. Jesus Christ preach more about hell than he did about heaven. He said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And if there is a hell, there is a heaven, because he spoke about that too. And if you trust Christ as Savior, not only will you be saved from hell, you will be saved to heaven to be with God forever. You say, preacher, how do you know that? It's in the word of God. From the very lips of Jesus Christ when he said in John 3, 16, for God, God the Father, so loved the world, that's you, that he gave his only begotten son, that's him, that's Jesus, that whosoever, that's you again, believeth in him, that's Jesus, should not perish, that's hell, but have everlasting life, that's heaven. All you have to do is believe on Christ and pray and ask him to save your soul and he will save you. Trust me, if he can save me, he can save you. He saved me out of the world, out of the club and out of the church. In spite of the church, he saved my soul. So just believe in your heart, dear friend, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. Romans 10, 9 and verse 13 says that if thou, you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you willing to trust Christ as your Savior today? Are you willing to pray a simple prayer that will take you about a minute with me, phrase by phrase, just repeat it after me. I'll help you. I'll guide you like someone helped me and guided me. Because right now you're blind. I'm getting ready to uh, help you see through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done wrong in my life. I've done evil in my life. I have broken your commandments. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. And Lord, help me to repent of my sins as I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for my sins, that he shed his blood on the cross for my sins, as the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, and that he rose again by the power of God. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit 
and help me to change and to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Uh, beloved, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins as the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, was buried because he truly died and rose again by the power of Almighty God, allow me to say to you congratulations on trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. As your Savior, you have done the most important thing in life because Jesus did the most important thing in the history of the world. And that is simply believing on Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who took away our sins. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, did it for us. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. And that's very simple, isn't it? And shall go in and out and find pasture. And go in and out and find pasture. And dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your uh, Lord and Savior today, please email me at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com or gls uh, at gospellightsociety.com or one of our other emails and let us know. We have some free literature that we want to send you immediately. We've done it for many others. We'll do it for you to help you to grow in the faith. We, uh, if you have a prayer request, Please uh, email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Dear friend, God loves you. We love you, and may God bless you real good is my prayer.